Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Blessed, highly flavored. <laughs> Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> Overflow from Sunday. Glory to God. If you weren't here Sunday, you missed it. Let me tell you. Dear God, help us. <laughs> glorious. Absolutely glorious. Thank you, Master. God is good all the time. Amen. Even when we're boneheads. Thank you, Master. You know, I saw <laughs> the sweeping of the Lord. Whew, sweeping. And all these demonic things being rolled up. Like somebody sweeping a house. And all the dust and all the debris getting. And they were going in this trash can like, you know. And the, 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 what do you call that uh, dust thing? That dust pan. Obviously, I don't use it enough. <laughs> Hallelujah. But anyways, uh, all these little, they were little demonic beings getting swept up and getting pushed into this dust pan. It was going right through this country. The broom of the Lord. Just sweeping it all up. You know, as we praise and worship, God just ambushes our enemies. He moves mightily. People don't realize the importance of gathering together and worshiping. Because it's warfare. And see, the enemy wants to prevent us from getting into gathering together to warfare. Because he knows without unity, it doesn't happen. You know? Isolation is a terrible thing in the kingdom. That's how the enemy gets people. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Glory. And in this sweeping, I don't know if you heard or not, but the Department of Justice head honcho was fired. Praise God. Because his name was Barr. Because he'd been holding back information the president has been requesting. I really believe that the next one is the FBI head. Because they're still holding back the information. And some of these um, Republican morons uh, that are congratulating Biden in his election. I mean, can you imagine Republican senators congratulating an illegal win? And it's not even a win. They haven't even proved it yet. They haven't even counted all the votes to, votes to prove it. You know Why? Because they're all caught in a China operation. They've been getting money from China. And now they're trying to avoid being exposed. Because now Trump's administration is going after China. See, they tried to deter saying Russia. But it was never Russia. It's always been China. China is a very demonic country. You, talk, you want to go to see demonic and, and oppression and torturing of people and so forth? I truly wish that we would just stop bringing anything from China in this country because it's all accursed. Make sure anything you buy from there, you break the curse off. Hello? Even if it's cheap, it's cursed. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. It doesn't matter. Everything I bring in on, on our campus, I pray every single day. I repent for anything that's been brought on that's cursed, whether it's been donated or purchased, and break the curse off and send those spirits out and back to the pit. That's what every household should be doing. That's a part of warfare. Amen? 2 Timothy 4. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of... Uh, yeah, right. I'm in Ephesians. <laughs> Hallelujah. Overflow. 
Praise God. I'm telling you, you should have been here. Anyways. Glorious. Thank you, Lord. You know, when that glorious presence comes like that, it lasts for days. It just lasts for days. And when that presence comes, it exposes everything. See, ah, never mind, you don't have to see. <laughs> in the presence, in the glory of God, he's so merciful because in that glory, everybody should die. <laughs> No flesh can handle the glory. It is automatic crossover. If you didn't cross over, it's because there's something that's still holding you. They're still separating you from God. Now, there may be a partial crossover, but there's a place where there's a full crossover. And I'm telling you, when you cross over and that glory is on you, it lasts for days. You dream differently. You think differently. Everything is different. And there's such a joy. Just nothing just matters, you know. And you're sensitive to the leading of the Spirit. You're sensitive to the conviction of the Spirit. You're sensitive. You're more detailed to things that's going on. You can see clearer. And that's where God's trying to bring us in. But see, when he showed up Sunday, he said, I accept your invitation. Why? Because it's the heart of people that draw the presence of God. When you come into a unity and everybody's worshiping and going after the presence of God, He will show up. Amen? Let's try this again. 2 Timothy 4, verse 1. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at His appearing, and his kingdom. Preach the word. In other words, decree the word. Because what you speak is what you eat. You speak light, you eat light. Be ready in season and out of season. In other words, be ready how, no matter how you feel. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. We are here. But according to their own desires. Because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your call, your ministry. In other words, they will reject true doctrine, allowing the desires of the heart to dictate the belief system. Amen? By, by what? By agreeing with deceptive doctrines of the mind, corrupting the heart with stubbornness, rebellious, self-righteousness, and not allowing the truth to penetrate the heart or the mind. This is where we're at right now. One of the things that God is trying to get us to, where we are like automatic. It's called a self-adjusting heart. A self-adjusting heart where you no longer think, geez, that I did that wrong. Is this right? Is that what? It's automatic because why? You've touched the glory, and when you touch the glory, you are different. And the more you touch the glory, the more you change. There is no thinking, is this clean or unclean? You know automatic. The heart is self-adjusting. Boom! Immediately. No thought. No reason, no justification, and no blame. Pure. Self-adjusting heart. Amen? That's where he's trying to get us to. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. I encourage you, if you didn't get Sunday's teaching, make sure you do it. Glory. Glory. 
Ephesians 6.10. Self-adjusting heart. In verse 10, finally, my brethren, be strong. Be strong, be strong in the Lord and the power of his what? Might, in his power. Be strong in his power. Then be strong in his, uh, be strong, in, in other words, be strong in his presence. And then you'll be strong in his power. Because without his presence, you can't be strong. So he says, be strong. In the Lord. In other words, be strong in the presence of God. And in the power of his might. Why? If you're strong in his presence, you'll be strong in power. Power to what? Overcome. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That means trickery, deceptiveness. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities. These principalities are governments. Hello. Against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against principal hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. In other words, be strong in his presence. Then you can be strong in his power to overcome self-destructive influence. What are these self-destructive influences? Passions and desires. That are offensive to God. There is a place in the spirit where the heart becomes self-adjusting to the heart of Christ. And to his words. Now listen. There's a place in the spirit where your heart becomes self-adjusting to the heart of Christ. And his words become your personality. I'm going to say that again. There's a place in the spirit where your heart becomes self-adjusting to the heart of Christ and his words become your personality. Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4.11. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. In that place of rest, I mean, it's a place of crossover. <laughs> Why? Because it's an automatic exchange. In his presence, in that glory, there's a rest, a place of rest. You don't look back, side, you, there, there's nowhere to look, it's just him. And in that place, there's a self-adjusting heart automatically. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and what? And powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, is in a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things that are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. In other words, the word becomes the personality. By penetrating the heart <laughs> and the mind of the thoughts to create a self-adjusting heart of God, aligning the thoughts with the mind of Christ. Remember, the Word becomes a personality of Christ in me and you. Amen? The word becomes the personality of Christ by penetrating the heart and the mind of thoughts to create a self-adjusting heart of God. It's aligning the thoughts with the mind of Christ by partaking of the fullness of the divine nature. See, there's an area where we partake of the fullness of the divine nature 
not just part. See, in this place, there's a place where it's point of no return. It's a point of no return. In other words, you're sold out. There isn't anything fulfilling to you but him. You're sold out. It's done. Nothing's fulfilling. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you're broke, you're rich. doesn't matter relationships. Nothing matters. He's the fulfiller. That's it. And you live for him now. You live for that presence. You live for that glory. You live for him. No longer us. Amen? That's a position, positional level that we have access to. But not everyone is willing to pay the price. Not everyone is willing to deny themselves completely. Not everyone is willing to let go of unclean things. They're still, listen, anything that you hold on to your past is preventing you from going forward. Romans 8. Some people can't do that. They still want to bring their old life into the new life. Doesn't work. Romans 8. Self-adjusting heart. You know, just think about if more of the body would access that position, how much more unity there would be. There wouldn't be division. There wouldn't be strifes. There wouldn't be my flesh is stronger than yours. People still fighting for their lives. They'd be over with. Why? Because they hit a point of no return. I'm telling that's how my life started in the kingdom. It was at a point of no return. I was given that offer. Do you want to be free from drugs and alcohol? You want a new life. In other words, you must reach a point of no return. Because if you don't want a new life, which is the point of no return, you're not going to get off of everything else. You'll still dabble. You'll still touch on clean things. And see, that point of return is not a one-time choice. It's an ever choice. The point of re no return stays with you all the time. There's not even a consideration. It's automatic. The self-adjusting heart always says, no return. Keep going. Don't look back. Don't pick up. It doesn't matter. Why? Because life eternal is much more better than here. There isn't anything in this world that can fulfill you. I don't care how wealthy you are. I don't care what you have. When you stand before the king of glory, he's going to say, yeah, what'd you do? That's where it all ends up. Right there. What have you done with the life I gave you? Well, I'm a good person. That ain't enough. I got too many other good people coming up to me. Remember, good people don't make it home. Only ones that do the will of God. Hallelujah. Verse 13, let's speak it. For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. Amen? But if by the Spirit you put the death, the, the deeds of the body, you will what? Live. I mean, you know, that's enough right there. What more do we need? <laughs> What's living according to the flesh? Your will. Your desires. Your place of not getting to uh, no return. Hallelujah. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are what? Sons of God. See, being led by the Spirit of God has nothing to do with how you feel. It tingles. It's, kind of, it's not being led by the Spirit. Amen? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. For the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are what? 
children of God and of children than heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. What was his suffering? Persecution. The suffering. Jesus came with a point of no return. That's your suffering. Maintaining that place of no return. I choose never to return to that life again. Not pick it up, not touch it. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at what he says here. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption and the glorious liberty of the freedom of the children of the Most High God. It's all waiting for me and you. A lot of people are not going to get there. Must have a pure heart and clean hands. Those that are led by the Spirit are called sons of God. Why? Look at a son of God has a self-adjusting heart. Amen? After God. It's ruled by the Spirit of God. And rejects the things that do not align with the desires of God. It says no. And it's self-adjusting. There isn't anything. There's no compromise. There's no complacency. There's no hesitation. No. Yes. No. Yes. It's self-adjusting. You know, maybe I could just... No, you didn't even get near it. There's no if, ands, or buts. It's all yes. 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 And no, no, no. Hallelujah. Galatians 5. You don't have to run to the Bible to find out if you're doing something wrong or not. It's automatic. If you haven't got there, you ain't reached there yet. You haven't crossed over enough, and there's not been an exchange. But it's available. You can get there. Amen? Pray everybody gets encouraged to dive through. Get to the point of no return. And get a self-adjusting heart. Galatians 5.22. Let's speak it. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Anybody there yet? Love. L-O-V-E, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its what? Passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. In other words... Here's that place again where self-adjusting heart is automatic. Automatic. No hesitation. I mean, you don't have to go, gosh, Lord, do you think that I should do, you know what I'm saying? It's not a, it's automatic. The heart's convicted. The heart says yes, whatever. And it's taken dominion. The heart is now dominion over thought. Amen? So thought does not have dominion over the heart. When the thought has dominion over the heart, that's disorder. To be led by the Spirit is to have fruits of the Spirit. To live and walk in the Spirit is to have the, a selfless, adjusting heart toward God. Automatic open to Him and shut to the enemy. Our heart is automatically open to everything from Him but shuts to the enemy. Galatians 2. You know, 
holidays, celebrations and events and birth things, these are times of challenges and where the enemy attacks emotionally. Especially if you've come out of that world now, now you're in the kingdom. Amen? And the enemy's trying to remind you of all of those things. And that's where you got to dive head first. Right in the presence of God. Never battle the enemy in your mind. You battle him in the spirit or you will lose. Amen? You can't battle him in the mind. You battle him in the spirit. When you battle him in the spirit, it's the bat Lord's battle, not yours. Does everybody understand that? Galatians 2, 17. But if, but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a what? Transgressor. For I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh or in the physical, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. In other words, we live by faith in Christ. In Christ, when we talked about in Him. Amen? About being in Him, abiding in Him. So in this, you and I no longer live for ourselves. We live for Him. We thrive. We fight. We pursue His presence. His righteousness. Why? Because we do not want our heart to be afflicted. We want our heart to maintain a self-adjusting automatic. There is no thought in it. There is no reasoning in it. Conviction is automatic. No. It's a no. Don't do that. No. No. It's automatic. Everything is automatic in there. Psalm 31. No, Psalm 37. I'm sorry. Psalm 37. Now we know the heart is the core of all desires, isn't it? How many of y'all know God checks out your desires? He wants to know if they're in divine order. He wants to know what the priorities are. So you can say all you want. You can be a sayer, but not a doer. There's a lot of wannabes not willing to be. Talkers, not walkers. Let me tell you, you better walk what you talk. Because we are in the days where there's a lot of things getting ready to happen. The sweeping is continuing. Remember, the Bible says judgment comes in the house of God first. Amen? So what you're seeing out in the world, judgment coming, means because it's coming in the house of God first. So it comes through the house of God before it goes into the world. That's why the Lord is saying, get your houses in order. Psalm 37, verse 3. What's it say? Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desire of your heart. Now again, uh, if you delight yourself in the Lord, it's because you're a chaser of his presence. You're a seeker of his face. And he diligently rewards those individuals. Let me tell you one of the ways he rewards you. Giving his desires in your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as a light and your justice as a noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait for him patiently. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. And do not fret. It only causes harm. Harm. 
trust, dwell, delight, rest. That's what he wants in him. Amen? Colossians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Colossians 3 and verse 1. Self-adjusting heart. Let's speak it together. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your thoughts on things above, not on things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life, Christ who is our life. See, you don't have a life no more. Your life, my life is not ours. The, and that battles every single day. Because the old man wants to take it back. The desires of the world want to take it back. The influence of the world is always trying to bring it back. When Christ, who is our life, our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Remember, Christ is your life. You're not your life. The world's not your life. Your health is not your life. Does everybody get it? He is your life. When there is a place where he is truly your life and you've reached a point of no return because he is your life, you will receive a self-adjusting heart. Hmm. Verse 5. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. And because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. And put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jews, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, nor free. But Christ is in all and in all. Again, this should be automatic with a self-adjusting heart that is set on him totally on the mind of Christ. Rejecting pride and expressing humility. You know, a pure heart is a humble heart. Pride is the number one killer of mankind. It's the greatest promoter of flesh. It fights for itself. It dies for itself. Amen? Philippians 3. Pride have its, has its own will. Philippians chapter 3. Oh, happy days. <clears throat> Is everybody okay? You know, the, the, Jesus told them that before they ask, he would answer them. Why? Because he knows the thoughts and desires of the heart. So when you have that relationship with the Lord, before you can complete the thought, it's already been answered. That's a self-adjusting heart. Does everybody understand that? It's already there. It's like, gosh, Lord. So even you, your thought... Of even considering it, because he says, acknowledge me. So as you begin to acknowledge him, the answer comes. 
It's already there. Why? Because he already knows what you're going to ask for or what you're going to desire. And it's already there. Amen? Does everybody understand that? That's relationship. Philippians 3.17. Hallelujah. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. How many of all know that money can be an earthly thing? Money is the number one stumbling block besides pride. Because the world uses money as a god. It dangles money over people, controls them. Then they hoard it. They don't tithe. They don't do all the other things they're supposed to do. They call themselves Christians. It says here, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. To himself. So what is he saying? Follow the seekers of God and seek his face, not his hand. See, a self-adjusting heart doesn't seek the hand of God. There is no want. The only reason why people lack is because there's a disconnect somewhere. Something's not right in their life. Where there's no lack, now don't get me wrong. I mean, somebody holds up a bank could not lack for a while, you know. But they're not going to get away with it, <laughs> Because everybody must always see if in this place, in the spirit, the Lord is always before you. He's always before you. So if he's always before you, you're going to get an answer before you even ask. You're going to know that's a self-adjusting heart. And what happens is when a, something else begins to stir up, the heart will automatically adjust. Why? Because it's under control by the spirit, no longer you. We don't want our heart controlled under us anymore. Our responsibility is to get in the presence of God so the Spirit controls everything. Amen? It's when we lack that, we lack crossing over and making connect, that we try to keep ourselves pure. You know, when we were out there using drugs, we couldn't keep ourselves from using. We tried. Amen? There was all kinds of things that we tried to do. But we couldn't do it. It'd be temporary. Nothing worse than a dry drunk. Amen? Management. Managing, managing, managing. I hate management. I don't want to manage the things of the world. I want to be free from them. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Matthew 6. Oh, happy days. Matthew 6, 19. You know how many people are going in debt over the holidays? Many. Many. People are working to pay to get somebody a gift. The greatest gift you can get somebody is Christ. <laughs> He already paid the price. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying not get somebody, bless somebody with a gift. But people go in debt because of an emotional desire. Hallelujah. Matthew 6, verse 19. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures. Now, what are these treasures? Desires. Does everybody get it? Don't lay up desires for the earth. <laughs> Amen? 
But lay up for yourselves desires in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, where the enemy can't break in and thieves don't break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there your what? Your heart will be. And remember, your treasure is associated with your desire. It's your desire. Why? Because your heart is the core of all desires. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Where your desire is, is exposing your heart. That's how God checks everybody out. What's your desire? You know, that's a fruit. It says, you'll know them by their fruit. You'll know them by their desire. What's the most important thing to them? Well, they may say God, but it ain't God. They may say the Lord, but it really isn't the Lord because you're going to know them by their fruit, by their desires. Is everybody okay? Treasures are desires. When set on earthly these are earthly things that corrupt. It opens the door to the thief and contaminates the heart. It says here in verse 23 or 22, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve darkness. Two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in money. He warns us. Amen? Treasures are desires. John 10. Listen, we want to stay in a position where the heart is automatically self-adjusting. You know, the Holy Spirit will come in and start saying, you know, you're trying to take control again. <laughs> what does fear do? It causes people to what? Try and take control. Look at the world. I want to go around and snap everybody's mask. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mask snapping day. <laughs> Maybe we ought to make them that say snap on the front, you know? Snap! Such fear. It still baffles me on how many people are under that control. Dear God. Goodness. The whole world is under that control. Again, if this virus is 99.9% .9 recoverable, why do people need a vaccination? Just get the flu, go home, go to bed, take their own flu, and go through it. Quit crying, I got cooler. You'll be okay. Trump tried to tell them that. You'll be okay. Some people don't even know they got it. They got tested. and they, You got COVID. Oh, God, shut everything up. You got corona. <laughs> You're going to get Budweiser next. Hallelujah. John 10, verse 1. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the sheep, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice, his unction. Yet they, by no means they will follow a stranger, for, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of the stranger. And again, this is where the self-adjusting heart automatically says, 
Yes, no. No, don't follow that. Yes, follow that. Is everybody okay? Why? Because it's no longer controlled by you. It's controlled by the Spirit of the living God. No longer by us. Don't agree with that. You can agree with that. It's automatic. Boom, boom. And you don't think about it. It just is. He, we know him. He knows us. We follow his voice. Amen? He says, I know my sheep. My sheep know me. Why? Because they're aligned. Amen? They're aligned with him. Uh, Psalm 14. Cool. It's a good night to die. <laughs> Psalm 14. Glory, hallelujah. Psalm 14, verse 1. You know, I get a lot of excuses from individuals that first thing they say, well, God knows my heart. Yes, he does. The problem is he's trying to show it to the, the people. Amen? Because they don't know their own heart. In verse 1, it says, the fool has said in his heart, there's no God. They are corrupt. They've done abominable works. There is none who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men. The children of men are heathens. Hello? To see if there are any who understand who seek God. They have all turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good. Not one. Hello. Does everybody understand that? They are what? Corrupt. They are heathens. Not one of them. Not one. Have, he says, of all the workers of iniquity, no knowledge of God, who eat up my people as they eat bread, do not call on the Lord. There they are in great fear, for God is with the generation of the righteous. The shame you shame the counsel of the poor, but the Lord is his refuge. Oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion when the Lord brings back the captivity of his people. Let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. Again, there is no good in the flesh. God calls them fools. Fools. So we don't want to be recognized in that area. We want to stay above all of that. We are not children of men now. We're, that's over with. Point of no return. No more children of men. You know, it's amazing to me because after my visitation, again, you've probably heard this, I saw my parents. Hi, you know. But they weren't my parents anymore. My parents were now, I have one parent who's a mom and a dad. He's my parent. He's the one that birthed me. He sent me. And I thanked my parents for putting up with me. And boy, do they put up with me. Put them, my parents through hell. Thank God I had to come back and tell them about heaven. That's the least I could do, you know. <laughs> Praise God. Jeremiah 17. So I know they're in heaven now, praise God. Same thing with my brother. I mean, you know, our family should be saved. Of course, some of the other ones, we'll see what happens. But I'm praying for them. <laughs> Jeremiah 17, verse 5. We're going to close here. Self-adjusting heart. Desire one Ask for one. Get into that place. Lord, how do I get into that place where I have a self-adjusting heart? 
Thus says the Lord, curses a man who trusts in man. It makes flesh his strength. Whose heart departs from the Lord. Do you understand when you become, when you come back in control again of your heart, God doesn't trust you. He can only trust someone that is constantly releasing his heart into his hand. It says, curse is a man who trusts in himself. Hello. You want to receive a curse? That's all you do. Depart. Start trusting in your own self and not God. I got this, Lord. That's okay. Does everybody understand that? Whose heart departs from the Lord, for he shall be like a shrub in the desert. In other words, he will become dry. So when a person begins to rely on their own strength, they become dry. And shall, or they've touched something unclean. And shall not see what is good when good comes. In other words, they can't see beyond themselves. God is trying to bring them a way of escape and they can't grab it. They can't see it. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert, shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land which is not inhabited. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be like a what? A tree planted by the rivers, who spread out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat or trouble comes. Why? Because he's got a self-adjusting heart that adjusts to everything that God says. But its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought. Nor will cease from yielding fruit. You know, how many of all know that when you become anxious, you're relying on your own strength again? Amen. The heart is deceitful above all things. Hello. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart, the desires, and test the thoughts or the mind, even to give everyone according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Again, in this place, God is trying to get us to a position where we have a self-adjusting heart. We don't have to think so much. Sheesh. Some people walk around with smoke. They're thinking so much. Some of them are short circuit, you know? They're so analytical. They're trying to calculate and figure out everything. Man, if I could unplug them, that'd be a wonderful thing. You know, they need to detach their head screwed on backwards or something. But praise God. A self-adjusting heart is a heart that's pleasing to God. Why? Because the Spirit now has control and you don't. Amen? You just go. You go and grow. And have a wonderful time. Do what you're supposed to do. Then get out of here. Praise God. Boy, we're waiting to get out of here, aren't we? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for getting us out of here. Well, you got us out of the one part. Now we're waiting for the other part. So, Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word. I pray, pray the, that this word would be sealed and that you'd bring everyone to a place with a heart. There's a desire to be a self-adjusting heart into your hands and into your ways. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.